This is the Carlton Podcast. Here's your host, Tony Moclair. Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Carlton Podcast. Mitch Robinson to my left. Uh, always a good sight to see. How are you, Robbo? Oh, it's good to be here, mate. Um, as I said, every week we're doing pretty well. We keep coming back, so... Can I just explain this to you before we get to our very, very special guest? Oh. We have a lot of guests in the oh. car podcast. I'm especially there, excited about this guest. I got the uh, text message from Madeline, our producer, yesterday and was doing a little dance to myself in the street. Embarrassment be <laughs> damned. Um, Michael Jamison, who occupied the seat you're now sitting in, Robbo, yep. this week co-hosted an hour on SEN. An hour? This Podcast. Was that like the sleep on the way home drip, no. was it? Is it called the drive home, it's got a sleep home, is it? No, no he was co-hosting. Yeah. This oh. is the dream factory, baby. This is where careers are made. Well, So yeah. d- that's what lies ahead for you, Robbo. I'll look, you I've got to face cards, the radio, right? mate, so I'll be, I'll be fine, I reckon. I am the Mr. Miyagi to your... Um, yep. What was his name? Um, Karate Kid. Thank you. All right, <laughs> now... Robbo, today's right. very special guest, and it's we'll explain why he's in here in a second. You wouldn't get a word out of him at training or anywhere else, so we'll see how we go today. He'll be singing like a stool pigeon, I promise. Exactly. He played for the Swans Districts in the WAFL, or the Waffle, in 2007. He made his debut for the Blues during our Round 1 clash with Richmond 2009. With me. He's played 105 games for Carlton, the first player in his Guernsey number to do so. He's kicked 179 goals and was nominated... For the AFL Rising Star in 2010, he is gun. Jiffy Gullet. Welcome, mate. Uh, appreciate it, love. Be mm. honoured to be on this um, podcast. It's very just, well done, Jiffy. It's just wonderful to have you in here. How are you going? Yeah, pretty good yourself. Yeah, yeah, good. Thanks. Well, there's a lot to games. get to today. We've got Greg Swan's resignation. We've got the Indigenous round, which yep. you might know something about. First, let's talk about the Adelaide game. Now, Robbo, you were benched for this, and um, by 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 saying benched, I mean you were kind of um, serving your one week yes, suspension. Yes, 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 I was. No, but I was still watching. I went to the game and um, went down and had a look. And the boys, as if, you know, because I guess because we we're playing against our teammate Eddie Betts, I thought it'd be a good good match. And yeah. as I said on my Facebook on my fan page, I said. Um, you know, I hope, I hope Eddie Best plays well but goes home with a loss. So Well, he did both. And it worked out well. So I was glad he played well, but it was even better that we got the win. Jeffy, how was it um, playing against Eddie? Yeah, no, it was pretty pretty hard, you know. Like, he's a real real main player that, that we, we we loved when he was here at, at the club. But unfortunately, he went, went to Adelaide back home and, um, yeah, it was like, it's weird, you know, like seeing him in the other, other opposition jumper. What he could do for us, yeah. what, he, what he showed that, that night. Yeah, because yeah, he nearly sunk us. There was a he couple did. of, you know, trademark bets passages of play that you yeah. just, you realise why he was so loved at the club. Any um, any yeah. banter the week before the game, leading up to the game? Was there any text messages thrown around or anything? Or Yeah, yeah, there was. Always just from Eddie trying to, <laughs> trying to get some words out, out of us, but yeah. never, never gave in. I saw him and Yaron have a little um, push and push and shove during the game, so it was uh, it was pretty funny to watch that. Well, that wasn't it. It, uh, it wasn't uh, just uh, with Yaz. It was. Um, Did you see Chuka? Tui? McLean and McLean Tui had pushed a, yeah. him over the line. I thought if that's a free kick, oh my goodness, he's going to kick that. Yeah, uh, Jamo had a go. Was there was there some unfinished business when Betts left the club? No, I'm not <laughs> sure. It was just you know, it's just like every other player when they go to uh, yeah. their club. It's always the same. They're always going to give you. Give you crap no matter no matter what and get into you. So it doesn't matter where, well, who you are, where you are, pretty much. It was a it, great it, moment yeah. at the end, Robbo, where where everyone went up to him. It was a lot like when uh, Kennedy left and played uh, his the first game, Carlton v West Coast. Yeah. Uh, he was mobbed by everyone, and it's a yeah. great sign of just how much or how well regarded a player is at the club. He started crying too. Did he? I'm yeah, sure he did. Well, that's alright. He's a big he man, you know. Up, yeah. Probably make a funny YouTube video about it. <laughs> Chiefy, can you just tell us what? Like how how it's affected you because you're a pretty tight unit. The the three amigos, you were one yeah. third of that. How did it affect you when uh, when Eddie said he was leaving? He, he told us about it, and uh, it's a, it's a hard, you know, like being being here, being with him for six years over here. I lived with him for for nearly half a year, and then um, we just end up become become real good mates and real real close with with with, with each other. So, but it was hard. It was hard at the time, you know. Like, Coming here, coming to training every day. He's not here, mm. and like just in the um, in our meetings, he's he's always sitting next to, next to us in, up top. So, but now now he's not there. 
pretty empty unpo- space. Unpo- empty space. Pretty, pretty quiet. So now Murphy's pretty much come yeah, on top. Yeah, I left that spot too. When, when Eddie left, I left my. We, me, him, and Jeffy sat next to each other. So when Eddie left, I left as well. Oh. I moved down next to Dennis because he's in, oh. he's next in line. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So line of succession. Yeah. Okay, um, you, uh, being good friends with Eddie, then you would have special insight to the horror and the trauma that he experienced when he lived with Robbo, yeah. where they shared a house. Was there any? Were there any kind of stories that he told, or was he still too traumatised to open Probably up about from, what it was like to share a house with Mitch Robinson? Probably not nah. uh, podcast worthy. No, he hasn't said much. I, I, I lived with Eddie before before Robo moved in. Oh, okay. Oh, righty, so, uh, mate. I was, I was there before he moved in, and then you could have warned me before I went in there. Then you ended up moving in, moving in, got a place together. So, but no, I haven't said anything anything bad. Not, not that I'm not. Aware mate, of. It was, right, well, I was the good house, mate. It was the other way around. I was traumatised oh. by living with them. Well, that's all. well. Eddie's not here to give us his side of the story because no, Adelaide, phone call, ring Adelaide won't release him for the podcast. Um, what was your impression of the game? Uh, you're on for the last quarter. You're a high impact player. Yeah. How um, you know? How was that quarter? Because that was that was when the game was there to be won. That was a really frantic quarter of football. Yeah, the game. Yeah, the last quarter pretty much was game was up up and about for for both teams. Any, anything could happen. And um, I came came on the last the last quarter and. I was just trying trying to get near where the ball ball was, so because they didn't have much 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 left, and um, few few uh, missed kicks we missed at uh, the start of the game where where we could could have gone in front and then didn't end up happening, and then um, missed missed a few few fifty meters got, got to give it away, and then they I think got a, they got a goal goal mm-hmm. or two out of it, and just let let them get back into it, and we uh, let 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 Eddie get um get loose pretty much, and then he got them got them back in the game, but was lucky enough to. To held, held, held on for the whole for the rest of the game and lucky enough to come come off with the win. What's your headspace like uh, in a game that's that tight, Robbo? Because I mean, as a supporter, I was in the world's most depressing pub watching it on Foxtel. I won't tell you which pub it is, uh, but um, what pub was it? <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not gonna, it's the local, and uh, and it's a DIVA. <laughs> off the record, no, it wasn't. Um, uh, what? I mean, the pressure, like any time you go near the ball, is your heart's in your mouth, are you thinking, don't screw this up? You know, what, what's, it, what's your headspace like in a tight game like that? Well, even just, just watching, I think, um, I get more nervous watching the boys play than actually playing myself. Uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty full on. Uh, you know, last quarter, as Jeffy was saying, like uh, every, every possession counts and every, every mark and play on and every aspect of the game, like giving the inch or taking an inch, it's, um, it's, 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 it's um, win or lose situation. So... You know they had um they had their scoring shots and we missed some of ours and I think you know we dissected the last couple of minutes of the game in the in the review on Monday and um you know there's things we could do better but yeah getting away with the with the W's um is is a massive win for us and I thought it was one of the one of the better games I've seen for a long time it was um you know back and forth and it was a real showcase of some skill and um, the pressure because you know they're known for their tackling ability mm. and their yeah you know, their quick scoring so I think we did pretty well with that and you know they beat Collingwood the week before and um you know we got over them in the end and. Um, it's a big game this weekend. We can't just rest on our morals for last week. Um, mm. It's just time to focus on Brisbane. Well, we, we will get to that in a sec. I'm, I'm not going to talk about certainly one of the most interesting, deliberately out of bounds decisions I think I've ever seen in the Is history of the AFL. That was was it Jamos or Tui's? Which I'm, I saw Rowie get a dunk. Oh, no, for sorry, it was Rowie. Yeah. Rowie, yeah, when he when he fumbled over the line. Yeah, yeah, um, it was. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I didn't get that because I. I uh, I'm a supporter, not a player. I, mean, I wonder how you guys go with that because you can never kind of objectively interpret the rule. Rowie was running with the ball. It seemed about half a foot in front of him. He didn't get it in time. It went over and then it was paid. Yeah. As paid. I thought it was a joke when the ump did it. Anyway, um, how was that when the siren went, Jeffy, and to, to get away? It wasn't a, a huge margin. We're up by 20 points. Seesawing game. When the siren went, what was your feeling? Oh, it's an awesome feeling when when you win any any kind of game, and the, in the position that we're in now, we're really grateful that we got got the win because we want to keep going forward, and every team wants to make finals, so we want to keep going in the right direction and and keep improving as we go along. So it was good, it was a good feeling getting the win, and every team does want to lose, otherwise you're going to have that mm. not that, not that good feeling, but it's, it's always a good good feeling when you when you win. Seems a lot more positive spirit in the playing group. It does. No, even just um, you know around the club, we've always been positive this year. Like we knew there were some things we had to work on, you know, close knit in inside and outside. But the first four games, we know we know we didn't get any wins, and 
Um, the boys, we, we all knew exactly what we had to do to work on it. The game plan on game game plan has not, not changed at all. It's just been more execution and having a bit more confidence when you're going forward. And, you know, blokes have been kicking some good goals and um, everything's just kind of fitting into place now. But, you know, we're still four and five, so we're still not on par where we want to be. But the only way we can go up is uh, kicking more wins. But... Yeah. You don't want to do a Jack Rewald and tell me a little bit more about the game? No, plan. I don't. I think I'll stay away from that. But if I do say something and come back and kick 11 goals on the weekend, yeah. then, I, then you know what? I'll give you the whole details oh, of all please. our structures and everything. So. Oh, please. Now, speaking of which, we are playing Brisbane. Um, it's a very important round. Uh, before we get to that, though, Jiffy, part of my, believe it or not, research for the podcast, I had to suffer through watching your highlights reel from 2012, Jiffy, yeah. which was awesome. You played a brilliant game against Brisbane that year. How many? Oh, sure. Oh, there was at least one from a set shot, beautiful kick, and a, and from a great grab too. So yeah. I'm hoping snacks. you keep up that form. It is Indigenous round. And now, I'm, uh, what are you doing there? Well, Robbo, <laughs> I'm, I'm presenting to you, excuse me, a bit of a chill, the yeah. Guernsey you will wear yes. against Brisbane up at the Gabba for the Indigenous round. Can you tell us something about it. the origins of the CFC monogram? It looks amazing. No, um, yeah, as you said, I'm getting presented with a jumper in this Indigenous round. Should be going on Jeffy, but um, <laughs> it looks amazing. That, um, well, it's you got know, the number 12 on the back. It I does have number 12 on the back, confusion. so, I'm, so I'm, that. I'm pretty wrapped that I'm playing. I just got told about 10 minutes ago that I'll be back in the team, so that always makes it a bit better. Um, as you said, yeah. Uh, my partner, Emma McNeil, uh, she designed this jumper. The Carlton Club was very good to um, offer us a job. And, um, you know, she, she had a lot of ideas to go into it. But, she, you know, we all came to the decision that we'll keep it kind of simple and but make sure the Indigenous is still in, in, the, in the front of the jumper and, and really recognisable. So it uh, looks amazing. But it's probably better if, um, you know, Emma explains it, what it is because, you know, I think that, that'll um, really get to the in-depth about, you know, the dots and the circles. It just looks amazing. So here's a, here's a little cut from Emma. Uh, yeah, well, um, I basically chose a very, um, you know, simple design, so I didn't want to take too much away from the CFC emblem, and I still wanted the jersey to be recognised as a, as a Carlton jersey. Um, so I chose a boomerang as, uh, as it's a symbol for men, and men in the tribe would usually um, use a boomerang to head out and hunt. Um, you know, uh, I chose, I, I sort of associated this as our, our guys who are heading out into a stadium full of thousands of people when they were hunting for a victory. So in a sense, they're the warriors of our, of our club and um, they worked together uh, to get that win. Um, I did uh, the, the letters, uh, the lines inside the letter F and in the boomerang in the base um, are all lines that are, are jagged and they're sort of, you know, never, they're connecting but they're never sort of flowing in the, the same direction and um, in a sense that's the, that represents the guys' lives um, that they live every day, uh, that's the ups and downs that they um, have personally at work, you know, that kind of thing, that, that's the, um, you know, the good and the bad times, the, the times when they've shone the brightest in a game or, you know, they felt like they were in the dark. Um, and then we had the circles in the, the boomerang and the dots. They basically represent, um, you know, the, the support system that the boys have. So that's, you know, their, their parents, their partners, um, the fans that um, have supported them continuously since the beginning and, and will continue to support them in the future as well. So. And there was Emma. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Emma McNeil, who designed Carlton's Indigenous Round Jumper. The most obvious question to you then, Jeff Carlett, is how the hell did Robbo get somebody so attractive and intelligent and creative and talented? Personality. And then <laughs> agree to have a child with him. I don't know. He's done pretty good for himself. Yeah, so I trapped her. Got it, I trapped got her. Trapped, he said, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can actually see a picture of the happy family with uh, Baby Boy Chance on the Carlton website. But just looking at the uh, at the Indigenous Round Jumper, you, Jeffy Garlett, how does that go, I guess, uh, what? Uh, firstly, what does that mean to you? And how does that go, I guess, um, representing the, the very broad nation that is uh, Indigenous Australia? Yeah, it mean, means even uh, means a lot, you know. Uh, the AFLs and the and the clubs letting every every team in the AFL to get an Aboriginal design on the jumpers. I think it's probably the first time in history they've ever done it. So it, it means a lot to all us players because uh, playing playing for our culture and our family means means heap. And being uh, being Aboriginal, like not many not many players out there. So I think there's only roughly eighty one or 90, 90 players out there. So we'd love to see more more Indigenous players to get out there and to play. Play for our culture and for our family. So, but having the design and the way the way Emma did it up, it looks looks awesome. And I'm I'm, I'm very honoured to, to to wear this jumper and to to have this design on the front. It mean, means a lot. How was your journey into the AFL? Because I know there's quite a story there. There was uh, 
you know, there was heartache, there were obstacles, there was there was drama. In terms of how you got to arrive at Carlton, can you just talk us through that? Yeah, well, my family lived in the country, so and I had had some in WA, in WA, yeah, yep. in Australia. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I thought you were Irish. I thought you were one of those Dublin. Oh, uh, well, you're on your mob now. So, you're oh, whoops. <laughs> no, but yeah, my family, uh, mum, mum and dad were living in Meriden, and um, for me to get to get where I, where I am now, I had to do it the hard way. I had to live in Perth. I couldn't keep travelling back and forth from from the country because it was like three and a half hours out of town. And I was lucky enough to stay with um, Andrew Emily from West Coast. I was lucky enough to stay yep. with his with his parents, and um, they looked after me pretty pretty well. And I was really really honoured and grateful that they uh, open arm open arms to let me come in. So and um, and yeah, I didn't get picked up in the first first year. The when I was eight, 18, 19 years old, I didn't get picked up in that draft. So at uh, that, that time, I was uh, I'm not going to get get picked up but then I just thought I'll give it one more one more year have one more crack and um, I was lucky enough that uh, Carlton picked me up in the in the first pick in the rookie list I'd say we were lucky too Jeffy oh, um, so. how do you I mean extended family is obviously the centre of Aboriginal life how do you go being in Melbourne with your extended family over in WA does that make it especially hard on you being Indigenous do you think no it's not it is hard. Like leaving WA is like four and a half hours on a flight, mm. but yeah, it's a it's a long, long transition. Like coming from over to, from Perth to Melbourne to a bigger city, bigger place, and um, heaps of people around. But it, it's different. It's hard. But um, I'm always on the phone to my my family pretty much most every day of the week. And as long as I get to talk, I hear from them, talk to them every, every day, I, I feel more comfortable. And I was lucky enough to know a few players here when I got when I got drafted, and and I'm. Met this fellow here, so I made it, so I made it even. So it's ups and downs, right, I guess. Down, so, but no, it's been it's been pretty good since I came here. Like, found it hard my first my first year, as every every player does. But once you once you get that comfort and you and all the boys get around you, you you feel like you're home. Jeffy was confident from day one. He told um he told Rats the first day he got yeah. here that you play around one in his first year, and um, no one could believe it. This is a little skinny kid from WA yeah. on the rookie list and. Uh, sh- showing everyone up and he actually played round one so it was, it was crazy he, um, I can honestly say within the fans there were big raps early yeah. on Jiffy Garlett I will uh, debut with this bloke debut with remember him. that were your parents at your uh, debut game yeah yeah, they, they came across to my, my, my debut but I don't remember saying that too to Ras, but uh, it's a story, but I'll go along. <laughs> well, if Robbo says yeah. it, then it's no, true. I I've heard it on the traps like, I, don't, I didn't hear it but, but I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go along with it so I was lucky enough Played my first game. I was lucky enough to get my first touch and kicked a goal, so I was happy with that. Mom, a mom was Dylan second Buckley's mom was there. Second touch, first goal. But um, who are some of the um, Indigenous players who who have inspired you? There's been you know there's been great Indigenous players yep. at Carlton. Sid Jackson obviously comes to mind. But say over the last ten years playing AFL or over the over the course of yep. uh, AFL history, I, I love I love watching uh, Jeff Farmer and Andrew McLeod. Yeah, uh, the only reason why. I'd, uh, my main favourite was Jeff Farmer because he plays uh, the way I, I want to play. So mm. like with a small coming forward, and he's just a natural, natural freak, freak footy. So the, the things he could do, I want, I want to do, do it myself. So. Yeah. What about a few speckies? And, you know, or? Bunch could turn a game on its head. He oh, was mate, uh, yeah. a phenomenal he a gun, player, makes and makes anything happen. Yeah, and having done a bit of radio in Adelaide, um, he used to come into the breakfast show I was doing over there, Robbo. Really? So, so he's kind of claim to fame was doing some radio with you then. Yeah. So again, another one. Three hundred game career. Yeah, he's gone on to bigger and better. Th- and <laughs> can I say, just a wonderful human being, just a lovely man. He is a good bloke. That's awesome. So, well, um, uh, Brisbane, how are we going to beat them? Their mids are formidable. What are we going to do, Robbo? <laughs> yeah, um, I think they don't have enough uh, credit as what they should be due. They're actually, you know, a great team. They've had a few injuries here and there. Um, they've got a, they've got three big players back this week, so which will hold up the defence. But yeah, as you, as you said. You know, Jed Adcock leads away pretty much for him with possession wise and uncontested marks and stuff. So I'm sure a player will be going to him in, in the in the forward line. Um, as you said, yeah, Jack Redden and those um, foot soldiers like Zorko and what's the other bloke's name? Rockcliffe, yeah, they rack them up. So they're they're very well known for their contested possession. So if we can match them there and clear the ball, we think we've got a better chance of kicking goals with young Jeffy here crumbing them and kicking a few freakish indigenous round goals. I reckon he get goal of the week. Um, Walks unfortunately is out. His knee that must be 
an especially cruel blow given that it's Indigenous Ran. Have you spoken to him? Um, yeah, I saw him this morning. He wasn't he wasn't trained with the main group, so we kind of got a bit of wind that he he might not be playing. Um, he's he's been pushing through every week, and he you know he's been giving us plenty. So I think a week off would be good for him, and just to refresh and get his body right, and come back next week and just absolutely smash it again because you know he's a vital member of the team. Yeah. And he holds the back line up so well and runs off, and you know he runs about seventeen k a game. He's a, he's a freak. So. Um, he'll be back, you know, next week, ready to go. Now you fly out a few days early. The game, uh, what yeah. day is the game on, Robert? Saturday. But Saturday. We fly up tomorrow. Yep. So All right. Only day early. Okay. Yeah. And so you just want to climatise a brizzy. Have a. You meet the fans up there. What's the routine generally when you get up there, Robert? Yeah. Well, um, we fly out tomorrow. We'll uh, go on the Virgin Lounge and we'll have our have our pre pre flight food and have yeah. a little bit of relaxation. But no, nah, when we get up there, it'll. Um, you know, we'll, we'll go through some team meetings and some structures and stuff and what we need to do to combat, you know, Brisbane in the midfield, et cetera. So we'll go up there on the on the, on the Friday and have a, have a bit of dinner with each other. We'll go out for some dinner. Then on a Saturday, it's just normal game day for us. So um, we used to fly up a couple of days early for interstate games, but I think, um, it's, it's you know, boys just get it, you know, night away from Melbourne, which is mm. good. And everyone, you know, kind of bonds. I love playing away from Melbourne because, you know, you just get out of the get out of the CBD <laughs> and okay. all that kind of stuff. And yeah, because you, you've got a small child. Exactly. You, it's perfect, but they're, ac- they're actually flying up on Saturday too, so. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the, the club, thankfully, the club flew up Emma and, and a little chance on Saturday morning. So right. she'll, she'll come up and spend the day with me. So it'll just be like a normal day for me, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, you do you know people in Brisbane, uh, Tiffy? Or just no, I'm from WA, man. Long way. <laughs> well, I don't know. I thought you might have mates up there. A guy like you would have friends everywhere, I would have thought. Um, Robert, how's it been this week? There's big news that the CEO of Carlton, Greg Swan, a man yes. who has done amazing things. Jeffy, to give you an example of how he's helped turn this club around, there were 26,000 members when he came here. There's now over 45,000. So that is, uh, that's a key performance indicator uh, that's going to be very hard to beat for his successor. How's that been this week, Robbo? I think Jeffy would have bring a few followers too, so yeah. would have been yeah. probably bumped up twenty thousand or so. Now, Swanee's been absolutely amazing. Um, I've been here for six years now, and I've haven't worked very closely with Swanee, but you know he's always around the boys downstairs and getting around. So we see him a fair bit, and he's actually you know one of the one of the best blokes that I kind of know going around the club. So it's kind of a sad day for us to find out that um, Swanee will be moving on. I think June, mid June. So. Mm. It's you know it's kind of a big blow having sticks as well and and Swanee but I'm sure we'll find some um, fantastic contributors to come in and take their spot but no Swanee will do do awesome wherever he goes after football I'm sure a club will be trying to pick him up ASAP because he has done amazing things things for the club and no we do owe him a fair bit so thanks Swanee for that and good luck mate I saw him today gave my hug and a bit of a bit of a handshake good Did I was trying cry? to sort my contract out but oh, okay. <laughs> I got to start all over again I don't know who I have to suck up to now it's getting crazy. Uh, I think you'll be all right, Robert. Yeah, um, now, Swanee will continue his role until after the club's 150th function next month, and he will officially step down on June the 23rd, the same day as Stephen Kernahan ends his presidency. That, so that is, that's a big cultural shift at the club. There's yes. no getting around that. They're two huge personalities and very important to the club. And on behalf of the podcast, we would like to thank them for Definitely. their great work serving the Carlton Football Club they will be greatly missed. Um, we should point out to Robert that there's no such change of personnel here at the podcast. Uh, now, just to give you some idea of uh, Greg Swan's impact uh, at the club and his contribution to the club, Jeffy, um, as I said, yep. total membership's gone from 28,000 to uh, 50,000 last year. Under Greg, Carlton has also secured long term deals with key major sponsors, including a Korean car manufacturer called Hyundai. Mars and Nike. He's also led the way in developing the $20 million training facility that opened at Vizzy Park in 2010. How good is that? It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Especially to get Mars on. So, yeah, we get some. Love free chocolates. Yeah. We love it. Mrs. You happy about it. that? Yeah, I'm very yeah. happy about that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Your favourite Mars product, Jeffy, what would it be? Sneakers. Sneakers yeah. or yeah. Snickers? Sneakers. Sneakers. <laughs> he oh, loves both. getting Mars sneakers. <laughs> Night, sneakers. Yeah. Mars. Oh, sneakers yeah. and Snickers. I like it. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's great. Spot on. Um... <laughs> Well, no wonder there's a training facility. You've got to work off all that sugar. Yeah, yeah you know well, it. That's why we train every day. Oh, yeah. So. You know it. Because look at him. He's the size of a house. Mate, he's, he's wiry. He's, he's ripped. I love that. Yeah. Now, on the field, Chris Judd, uh, Mick Malt. That should be off the field. Chris Judd, Mick Malt, House, most recently Dale Thomas have been key signings under Greg's leadership. And... Uh, uh, the hunt is on for a new CEO, so um, we wish the club luck with that. Now, um, before we go, uh, we uh, 
be going to get in. We will get to the quiz in a minute. Sorry, I'm a bit tongue tied. We should uh, remember Wes Lofts, another great servant of the club. So we say, Valo Wes Lofts. Wes was a member of Carlton's jailbreaking premiership team of 68, a long serving chairman of selectors through the halcyon days of the 70s and 80s. Oh my God, what a time. And a pivotal figure at Princess Park in the second half of the 20th century. And uh, you wore a black armband for him last week. Yep. Yeah. Yes, we did. It's time for the quiz. I'm going to throw over to Robbo to explain how it works. You know, throw, well, I've got to explain it. You've got to explain it. Yeah, well, you were a multiple winner of it. Yeah, but last week was a shambles because I think Jamal might have got some inside information because you were, oh. you were texting him the night before the, <laughs> night before the quiz, so... Mm. Oh, I can, that's an outrageous allegation, So pretty Jeffy. much, Jeffy, it's called Knowing Your Teammate. He's going to round off about five questions, type things, a bit of statements, um, and... First in best dress, so if you guess who the teammate is, uh, you win. So Yeah, so, you'll win a Mars bar. How's that? Sounds no, awful. he's got right, plenty cool. of homies, right? All right. I know the way to your heart, Jeff Carlett. All right, here we go. Uh, clue number one. I made my debut for the Blues during the Round 7 clash against West Coast in 2008. Chris Aaron. David Allard. Oh, my God. Did I get it? <laughs> no, you didn't. Not Dave Allard. Yes. Oh, 2008. <laughs> we got drafted in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That was even and quicker he, than Jamo And he kicked a goal, didn't he? I know he kicked a goal Did he? Okay, he so did. far I've played 47 games to Carlton My path to Princess Park began at the then Midvale Football Club in WA What are they like? What was the question again? Uh, <laughs> He's just thinking about his win Yeah I'm depressed again Listen, he's away. It's devastating My path to Princess Park began at the then Midvale Football Club in WA Why would you give what him a question which involves Perth? Because he's probably watching that game Midvale. West Coast yeah. And he's good like these... David Allard, played for Midvale. Yeah. Are they yeah. a good club or... Yeah, it's an awesome club. Midvale Junior Football Club. Is that yeah. you play for? Yeah. Okay. No, oh, well, don't even look at... You better start knocking it. Huh? You better start bagging a team out. No, I wanted to know what they were like. I wanted to know yeah, what their no, reputation was. was. No, it was pretty awesome. Did you got pretty defensive. much really had, well, three, four white... What? Oh, three, four... <laughs> yeah. Three, four guys and the rest are pretty much Indigenous players. Oh, okay. So, so that go all right then. <laughs> So that's a permanent and Aboriginal team know, of the century. I don't really want to play this and game. Nick Nat Nui. We had Nick Nat Nui there. He was there too. Big really? Nick Nat. Yeah. Wow. 6056. Okay. Chris Sharon. Myself, Chris Sharon. Dangles? Nick Nat Nui. No, nah, not Dangles. Who did Dangles play for? Um, Michael Walters. Yeah. Fremantle. So, so is that how far back you and Yaz go? Yeah. Wow. Each other for a while and, and David, David Allard too, so... That's how, long That's how the kind of question you throw at him. He's like one of his like long-time friends. Yeah. So oh, okay. just come on, man. Okay, well, Give me a Tassie question next week. <laughs> That's what it's like doing. Wait. I was only one bloke off. So I'm getting bagged here. That's I'm right. covering it from both sides. Do you You're even right. want to hear the rest of the clues? Yes, I do. Okay, here we go. Clue number four. After a brief, se- after a brief season with Swans District in the Waffle, David Allard. I was recruited by Carlton. <laughs> Dennis Arnfield. What have I done now? <laughs> Dennis Arnfield. Huh? Oh, is it, Ella? is it still Ella? Yeah, it's still oh, Ella. Okay. Yep. Yeah, not Jeff Garlett. After a brief season uh, with Swan Districts in the Waffle, I was recruited by Carlton as selection number 34 in that year's rookie draft. After a brief stint with Carlton's then AFL full, uh, affiliate, the Bull Ants, I was promoted to the senior squad when Andrew Walker was placed on the long-term injury list. He's been there about seven times, I think. <laughs> in 2009, I was awarded Best Clubman at Carlton's B&F. That's a pretty good achievement. Yeah, yep. he is. And he's uh, guested on the podcast before. Dennis Oh, not this year, though. No, I think it was last year. Dennis Dennis if, yeah, if we start... If we start you know I'm deaf. If we start going you. down Dave Allard's path, getting him on the podcast, and I know that I'm doing a bad job. <laughs> well, we've done a great job today. We've Jeff, Jeff Garlett. Thank you so much. Good luck for Indigenous Round. No problems. Thanks for having me. And uh, we would love to have you back anytime you're ready, willing and able. Yeah, when he was, when we get to me in, I'll be here. Yeah, yeah. great. Rob, I'm going, to hold him to, I'm going to write that down. We got it on re- recorder, so. Okay. Uh, great work from Emma designing the Indigenous Round Thanks. Jumper. Thank it's you. awesome to have you back in the team for the Indigenous Round against Brisbane. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, the Adelaide game would have been a Mitch Robertson picnic. We still got the win, so. But That's exactly. Um, uh, no Mitch Robertson win, Mitch Robertson win. win. Yeah, that's what we want to see. And we'll catch you next week on the podcast. Go Baggers. Go Baggers.